Yeah, I think we're ready. Uh, thank you very much, Lisa, for um, uh, handing over now to this uh, sort of third and kind of final major section of the event. And I'm very, very excited to have uh, with us this morning uh, a fantastic panel of um, industry experts, entrepreneurs, uh, academics and support organizations uh, who can, I hope, give all of us some insight into where next? This is my big question. We've got success already, but where next for this region uh, in terms of growth and success? So joining me this morning are in not alphabetical order, uh, Barbara Starrick, Chief Growth Officer of EPOS Now. Good morning, Barbara. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Uh, I have Professor Fiona Lettuce from UEA. Good morning. And we have Taya Goodluck from Tech Nation. Good morning. And do we have Simon Thorpe from Cambridge Angels? I think Simon may be able to join us as we go into the panel, but um, we are here in the familiar environment of Zoom meeting. Um, very strange to be having a Zoom meeting during a live event, but I've got my headset on. Thank you very much to the team at Quatrius who provided me with that. And so sort of without further ado, I'd like to kick this off, if I may, um, with a question for Barbara. Ah, Simon is joining us. Hello. Good morning, Simon. How are you? Excellent. Simon's just joining on audio. Welcome. Hey, morning, everybody. Hey, welcome. Yeah, so... Uh, I'll just introduce Simon again. So Simon Thorpe, uh, maybe known to many of you, is a very active serial investor, is uh, the chairman of Cambridge Angels. Um, and uh, so we have, um, hopefully, the, we've got the full panel now. Hooray, we can get, we can get cracking. So yeah, um, so first off, Barbara, I mean, congratulations. EPOS now is one of the uh, Tech East 100 companies. How do you feel? Uh, it's fantastic. Look, and the company has been, we've been growing, we've been rapidly expanding. And this type of uh, nomination, this type of recognition really just, it, first of all, it reflects the effort that we've all put in. It also reflects how much robustness there is in the economy and robustness there is in the East of England. So we genuinely really appreciate it. And as the person who's responsible for growth, nothing but helps validate where we've been and where we're going. Well, um, it's, that's, that's from the horse's mouth. Um, I mean, this program is here to help. Uh, help these businesses uh, succeed and help and, and hopefully EPOS now has been one of the most successful store, uh, sort of success stories of the last few years. I mean, I'd be really interested just to kick this off. We've talked quite a lot about talent this morning, the importance of having a really vibrant talent pool to fuel growth, uh, whether it's right at the early stage, getting the, get the initial ideas together, getting product market fit and getting, you know, finding finding investors. But from a talent point of view, Barbara, I mean, how has how's the kind of pandemic affected EPOS now in terms of its hiring? Are you hiring more broadly than before in terms of geographies? I mean, how's it working? That's a great question. And I think COVID has, for all of us who've been in the industry or industries for a long time, COVID's had a massive change. And, and I'm speaking on this Zoom from London as part of an organization that has been traditionally based in Norwich in the east of England. But COVID has changed things dramatically for us. I joined the organization as an employee 176 to actually really foster grow growth domestically, internationally. And we've now gone above 450 employees during the last six months. And it's an incredible period of growth. We couldn't have done that without the hybrid autonomy that COVID has brought us. We're now able to look across all of the UK for talent that allows us to actually both specialize in areas and attract people who perhaps wouldn't have considered a Norwich based employee, including myself. I've always been London based and I can now look at a company like Norwich, a, a company based in a place like Norwich and see the possibilities that we have found. It's also allowed us to really creatively look at how we have our sales teams. We have sales teams that are actually geographically based, Spain, Mexico, et cetera, working as part of our core teams, fundamentally change things, attract different talent, and actually ensure that our core home office of Norwich is able to foster and grow, but without any limitations around it. It's been an absolute game changer for us. I mean, that's really exciting to hear that, uh, and, and I mean, forgive me if, um, you know, for people who perhaps don't know EPOS know that, that well, I mean, your business is in that hospitality and retail 
s s sector that has been, um, well, for, for a number of months, extremely challenged. What I'm hearing is uh, you've been able to ride that, you know, ride, ride with the changes and actually take, take advantage of sort of digitization opportunities. I mean, Simon, um, from an investor point of view, I mean, that sounds like the kind of mindset and approach that investors would look for in founders and, 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 and teams in terms of growing their businesses beyond the sort of early days into that scaling phase. I mean, what are you seeing, what is Cambridge Angels seeing as a kind of angel investment group in terms of, you know, the kind of the appetite for investors to continue to write checks for innovative businesses in these times? So thanks, Tim. Uh, obviously, at Cambridge Angels, we're looking for outstanding entrepreneurs who are, are bringing innovative, uh, differentiated technologies. And uh, you know, the deeper the deeper the tech, the the more IP rich, uh, the bigger the market, the better. Um, you know, we are looking for outstanding entrepreneurs, and uh, outstanding entrepreneurs in this environment of the last six months have spotted very quick change and have spotted opportunity, and that's well, that's uh, that's the definition of an entrepreneur. Um, we are seeing still lots and lots of opportunities, um, mainly because COVID has essentially accelerated the digitization of many industries. So healthcare is, is an obvious example, yeah. but you've seen it in education. You've obviously seen a massive acceleration of e-commerce as well. So there are plenty of opportunities out there for, for people to write checks out uh, too, but uh, you've obviously got to be focused on where you're going to invest your money. Um, because it is actually very easy to slip into investing money in what I would call declining industries rather than growing industries. Uh, so that's what we try to do, to focus on, on growing industries. And I think back to Barbara's point that around talent, um, to some extent, uh, the COVID has sort of flattened uh, the, the geographical um, differentiation there used to be. You know, it used to have to be very close to London, uh, but over the last few years, and this has been accelerated by COVID, it actually doesn't really matter where you are, provided you've got good technology and good tools to support you. So, I guess building on that, uh, I mean, to Fiona, I mean, UEA is in the talent business and um, your graduates um, go on to work all over the world um, in very diverse environments. But also in, in terms of your own kind of academic uh, sphere of uh, specialization, which is innovation and entrepreneurialism and all of that. I mean, how, how is UEA now un, it, under the current sort of circumstances different? So how are you preparing the next generation of talent to be able to kind of adapt to a changing world, uh, things, there may be future pandemics, let's hope not, but you never know. Um, the, the, there is a lot of disruption, obviously driven in the technology sphere from all sorts of fronts, whether it's AI or whether it's through things like quantum computing, whether it's the opportunities around cyber, globalization and so on. I mean, how is UEA looking at this question of sort of how do you prepare your young people or, or people um, learning later in life for the future? Yeah, so as Simon said, you know, universities like other businesses had to move to remote working almost overnight um, and not, not an easy task for quite large, complex organisations all of the time, but we managed it very effectively. So we continued to be open and be teaching our students um, through the lockdown, uh, but online and through uh, sort of forums not dissimilar to this. Um, you asked about the innovation as well. So UEA has been trying to support it, its students and businesses within the region with their innovation. Um, and we've got lots of different schemes that um, enable that. So one example is the ERA project where, for example, we have innovation vouchers that support businesses to interact with the expertise that we have within UEA. So although face-to-face -face contact isn't quite as easy now. We can find different ways to connect businesses with the expertise that we have within UEA. And you might have picked up as well some of the really exciting projects that we did in response to COVID. So our technicians um, stayed in the labs and produced sanitizers and made visors to supply to the NHS and other um, key people. Um, students were involved in those projects as well. So really unleashed the creativity and, and talent that we had. Um, we've got other exciting initiatives coming on stream, so Productivity East, so that will be supporting businesses and students with developing their 
productivity and innovation tools and techniques and the expertise again to support um, both the students to learn about these new topics and exciting new technologies, uh, cyber security, as you said, AI, Internet of Things, and be able to apply them in real projects. So lots of opportunities for businesses that are listening today to connect with the university. We've got lots of students who are at the most sort of entrepreneurial phase of, of their life, very excited, um, and they want to work with local businesses to gain skills and expertise and understand how the theories we're teaching them can be applied in practice or not sometimes. Um, so if you'd like to get in touch with us and explore how we can help you, uh, very happy to do that. So as Simon said, there's lots of new opportunities out there and you might be thinking about some of those opportunities and don't quite have the resource to explore them. A student project, a placement, an internship could help you with a, with a small project in a very focused way um, and help you explore new markets, new opportunities, new products. Um, so that's just some of the ways. Um, and actually I've broken out today, so I'm, I'm working on a student enterprise panel today and that's where we're looking at students with entrepreneurial startup ideas and as a university we invest in them up to fifty thousand pounds and then launch them on their way so safe point is one example of a company that's been through that process um, and again we're always looking for mentors to support those students on their journey so um, businesses can get involved with the university to support our students on their innovation journeys and to learn from your experience and hopefully not make the mistakes that some of you may have made and uh, wish you hadn't so so lots of different ways i can put in the chat um, an email address to contact us if you want to access um, talent and expertise thanks thank you fiona and yeah please do put that in the chat and please use the chat uh to engage as i see many of you are doing Please also post in the Q&A. And we're going to pick up one of the questions from the Q&A, which I think brings together quite well some of the themes that Fiona was just touching on. And I suppose that theme is about support, and it's about how do you find the best possible support um, for your business. I mean, Steve, Stephen talked about this uh, in his talk, and I, I think he's right that, you know, it is about who can help you. I mean, Taya, Tech Nation is in the business of providing really kind of um, across the whole of the UK as a sort of a level playing field, I think, increasingly, um, access to expertise, peer-to-peer -peer expertise, programmes. I mean, Fiona talked about the ERA programme, which is a great incentive. But I think we all know, and, and, and the Tech East 100 is, 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 is arguably another of these programmes, it, that it can be quite hard to engage um, businesses that are very busy, focused, which is right, they've got, so they're focused on getting what they need in place to be successful, focus, obsessing about the customer, really thinking about growth and all of that. I mean, some of the businesses on the Tech East 100 are already members of various Tech Nation program cohorts, so I'm thinking about things like Upscale or the new Net Zero. I mean, could you talk a little, Taya, to the question of, you know, how, you know, what do companies really get out of these programs in your view? How does Tech Nation think about, you know, what offers value and how are you adapting your offer going forward? Yeah, I mean, obviously that question is music to my ears. I'm more than happy to talk about that. And I think we do completely appreciate businesses, particularly scaling ones, which um, are those that we're targeting, you know, high growth digital tech businesses, they're super busy and often a program or um, some of these sort of support initiatives aren't top of the priority list. But I do think in terms of what they can offer and why it's important to engage, I mean, it does very much vary depending on the stage of business. So what we find for earlier stage companies they really need is the PR, the profile, and I'm talking about on a national level, um, the opportunity to pitch to investors, again, national investors, um, corporates, is what they need. And that's an example of that, you know, is Tech Nation's Rising Stars programme. Um, it's completely free to take part in, there's no equity there. It is just about brand profile and pitching to the people that you need to see your business. And obviously there's a lot of pitching competitions out there. So that's why I'd say at earlier stage, it is good to engage with those kind of opportunities. As businesses continue to scale and grow, what we hear from founders and what we understand they need is more that peer to peer learning, you know, a support network of founders that are probably experiencing very similar scaling growth challenges round a table, candid, Chatham House rule conversation, um, and all those sessions are facilitated by scale coaches, so essentially entrepreneurs that have been there and done it, 
um, and can kind of share their their war stories. And as one of the panelists said before, you know, hopefully that helps similar mistakes not to be made again. So I think what we offer and what a lot of programmes offer is dependent on the stage company and what different businesses need. Um, but it is about knowledge, engaging with those that are going through similar challenges and experiencing similar opportunities and that network element along with brand and PR. Um, another type of programme is corporate innovation challenges. Obviously that addresses a different need, which is about getting in front of new potential customers and normally quite big ones. And I really appreciate that it's really, really hard to keep on top of what these opportunities are. So I guess that's where I see sort of my role and organisations such as Tech East and the Cambridge Knowledge Tech Corridor. It's about signposting and saying, look, there's this amazing opportunity out there. Do you consider it and do apply if you're eligible? Very quickly, conscious I'm rattling on, but linking back to the East, I personally loved seeing more companies engage across Norfolk and Suffolk. As Tim said, you know, we've got some really good success stories locally in terms of developing experts was a rising stars winner and was obviously scaling like mad at the moment. We've had Rainbird who are on upscale, EPOS Now, Future 50, and we've just had Spark EV announced as joining Tech Nation's new Net Zero programme. So I'm always here to chat and then it's not all about Tech Nation's programmes, clearly, you know, there's loads of different opportunities out there, but do consider it and do engage. Yeah, I, I mean, sort of. I think to kind of perhaps bring that bring that point perhaps round to that invest from an investor lens and also from the company lens. I mean, so so first, I mean, Simon, when you as an investor, when you look at companies that have sort of really proactively put themselves out there, engaged in these types of programs, chosen good ones, and I mean, do you see that as a sort of indicator of ambition and success, or or, or or potentially just playing devil's advocate, could it be a distraction from the core business? Well, Tim, I think as uh, Thea just said, the, the, all these organizations actually promote entrepreneurship and they, they promote innovation. And that's good because, uh, you know, actually a lot of young people don't really think naturally about these things and they need to be encouraged to, to uh, really as Fiona was just saying, they need to be encouraged to think in a right way, in the, in the way that uh, supports taking their own initiative building things themselves, taking entrepreneurial risks. And these are things you don't learn at school. So actually having these sorts of organizations that we have has been really helpful. In terms, of, in terms of investment, I mean, obviously in Cambridge Angels, we tend to focus on the Cambridge cluster, but we invest in companies all over the UK. And, and actually of the three companies that uh, Thea just mentioned, I'm quite familiar with two of them, even though those are not Cambridge companies. So, you know, I've already seen them along the way and Cambridge Angels have almost certainly seen most of these companies. So we see a lot of companies and part of the other um, really strong point of many of these uh, organizations is actually encouraging networking. It's joining the dots. It's getting people to talk to each other. It's making people understand that there is somebody out there that is willing to help them or could help them or has had a similar experience that uh, will, uh, as Fiona said earlier, <laughs> help them learn much more quickly and stop making the mistakes that we've all made. And I mean, Barbara, uh, Epos Now as a, as a business, I, I think, you know, one of the reasons why Epos Now is, is reasonably well, well known, certainly regionally, is that you've, you know, you've gathered a whole range of accolades and awards and, you know, you've been on, you know, multiple lists, including uh, Future 50, uh, the uh, Tech Nation sort of flagship programme. I mean, in reality, um, as, you, as, as you grow larger now, I mean, how important is it to maintain that kind of network or, or do you feel that the sort of job, job is done uh, with, with your level of growth and success? You know, it's, it's a really good question. I think you actually can tie two things together, that sort of network within community and that collaboration that exists positively in both directions, right? A company like ours who has networks, we get on lists, that actually are just obviously showing the success that we've had, which is fantastic. We can then translate that back to other growing organizations. That never ends, that continues to go. It also is part of what happens in just business operation. I'm 25, almost 25 years into my career and that business operation collaboration never changes. You always should be looking for somebody who's done something you haven't done yet and learn from them and help the person behind you. And that happens between business and the network community like Tech Nation, like many other organizations that 
play a very similar important role, but also between businesses, between individuals, LinkedIn is a great tool for that. I think that type of collaboration is what helps a business get from step A to step B, also helps an individual leader get from step A to step B. So no, it never changes, it never ends. It also is on multiple dimensions, not just only how a business operates in between. And I think as we go through big scale ups, I've worked at very large organizations, small organizations, they, the role that, the place that you're at, there's always somebody who is where you're going and there's al al always somebody behind you who wants to be where you are. And I think understanding that whole Oh. And I think the people who understand that and invest that time in it the most tend to be the most able to achieve the goals that they've set. Thank you. I think this, this is a really important topic, which is I think about how we learn from each other and how those who have got slightly further ahead can give something back. Now, there's some, there's some great questions coming through in the Q&A. And if, uh, if anyone uh, has got a burning question, please use the Q&A, or you can put it in the chat. I'm just going to have to look at my feed over here, which is where the, the screen is. So apologies if I'm not making eye contact. Um, but the, I think there's a question about inspiring the next generation, which is we've got We've not just got a hundred amazing companies. We've got loads and loads more. I mean, th there are a hundred companies on this list. There's another hundred that we couldn't get get onto the list. There's at least you know that many, if not more, in the Cambridge cluster, and and we have um, you know Essex just round down the road. So you know we've got this kind of um, you know we've got this big 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 capability and big 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 kind of um, volume of expertise, I suppose. How do you see the, what do you see the role of, and this is a question for everyone, of the companies and the individuals and founders who are, who are on, this, on this Tech East 100 list? What's, what's their role and almost responsibility in terms of inspiring the next generation? So I'm thinking about getting into schools, you know, mentoring and inspiring young people. Is this a, you know, is this a sort of, is this something that, 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 that we should be absolutely encouraging these successful companies to pursue? Is it something to fit in around your other obligations? I mean, how important is it to anyone? I know, Taya, you've just done, Tech, 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 Tech Nation's just done a big skills, you know, skills and talent sort of report and survey. I mean, what are you seeing from Tech Nation? Yeah, I mean, clearly digital roles are growing like mad and that's just going to continue. And I think looking at like schools, colleges, et cetera, and um, relaying that information back in and engaging with organizations such as Form the Future, Founders for Schools, et cetera, is really important. And I do really appreciate that founders and C-suite are super busy. Um, I'm not sure if that's an excuse or not, but equally, I think there's other people in the organization, when we talk about digital tech, it's not necessarily always those software or like super technical roles. I think it's also dispelling the myth that to work in tech, you're in like, you're doing coding. I work in tech, but I'm not in that sort of role. So I yeah. think it's about educating around all the sorts of different roles people can do in tech companies and founders and, and senior leaders, getting other people in that organization also engaged with inspiring the next generation. I think I won't get started on this one because I'll never stop. Obviously, there's a big conversation around diversity and inclusion at the moment, engaging and diversity obviously means a lot of different things. It's different backgrounds, races, gender, etc. So I think, you know, spreading the word that there's so many exciting, amazing options in tech, and it's not necessarily just on the super hardcore side of coding. But companies have to get out there and get their employees out there to talk about it firsthand and share sort of their real life stories, I think, because that's really inspirational. I mean, Barbara, you're, yeah. I mean, how do you look at this question? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think, Tay, you touched on, on something really good there, which I've, I've spoken about several times. And uh, as a sort of senior leader in technology over years, I've often been asked about women in technology. And I think, Tay, you hit the nail on the head. Technology is also a business, and there is so much business that happens in a business that isn't the technology. And I've, I've long been uh, sort of responsible for product and development, and if I just take our organization, we've got a very, very large development organization, large product management organization, and then we've got no fewer than 200 
50 or almost 300 other people who are doing other roles that touch a technology business. And I think there's, there's also a COVID opportunity here and, and our business has really done quite a good job of spotting opportunities in COVID. And I think the strongest entrepreneurs in the world are always people who can spot opportunity when it looks like there may be none. And Tim, you alluded to the fact that we sell our point of sale system to retail and hospitality. And as soon as this all happened, obviously many of our businesses shut, but for every business that shut, there was a pharmacy that needed a better system. There was a corner shop that needed a better system. Let's be honest, there was a lot of off licenses that needed better systems very quickly. And spotting those opportunities is really important. And, and taking that to COVID and other opportunities that exist for people who are busy is this type of interaction. I genuinely believe that. You know, when you go into a school and it's so much fun to see the people who are coming up and, and realize that that's coming right behind you. But sometimes it does take time and it does take you know, literally a whole day out. When you can spend an hour and have an impact that's just fit into your day, you can actually do two or three of those in half the time that it would take you before. And I think as schools have gone online, further education has gone online, everyone has gone online, that type of opportunity, we really need to actually expect more of businesses, people like myself, businesses like ourselves, and schools to optimize that link between the online communities, because you need to do more of it time is usually of the essence, but actually yeah. all these things have coalesced where everybody now has the same technology and the same expectations. We should use it. Thank you. Uh, we've got kind of time for one wrap up question before we have to have to, have to uh, finish the panel. And I guess trying to pull some of these threads together. Um, I mean, I read, I read something that Simon wrote maybe a couple of weeks ago. I think Simon, you used the term Necessity is the mother of, in, of invention. Um, and, and, and right now, the necessity for a lot of businesses, you know, after initial kind of cash flow and HR and people considerations and sort of survival, survival techniques is, has been around where is opportunity? You know, if, if a pivot might be required, how do I go about executing that uh, elegantly and, 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 and rapidly? Um, so I guess the question would be, for all those entrepreneurs out there who would aspire to be on a program or a list like Tech East 100, want that kind of, want that sense of achievement, you know, f from all of the panel, what would your kind of top piece of advice be in terms of developing yourself and developing your business in order to succeed and be part of the next generation of talent? So, I mean, Simon, perhaps you pick that up because you wrote the, <laughs> wrote the line. <laughs> I think it was a quote, well, but you know, you, well, you quoted the line. Well, thanks. Well, well, I grew up with her mum and dad who were both entrepreneurs, and, and I kind of my mum was always telling me that because she grew her own business. Um, but I think I think um, actually a couple of things. Founders for Schools is worth mentioning in the context of the discussion just now, and also there's a company called uh, No Code, uh, which which is essentially building on what Thea was saying, which is basically teaching digital skills without actually having to code. Um, I personally think it's really important. If you can learn to code, it re it's really helpful. But schools do not teach uh, finance and technology. They don't really touch on their subjects at all. And that is a big issue for us as an economy. It's a big issue for us as entrepreneurs. So we've all got an obligation to try and inspire young people, particularly girls, to, to think about technology. Um, in terms of your question, I think probably the one thing I would say is, um, is is learn to think about acquiring digital skills, whatever they are. If you acquire digital skills, you will be employable in today's economy and you will find employers that are interested in your, in your skill set. Thank you, Simon. Uh, very briefly, uh, we've got about a minute and a half to go. Um, Taya, what's your one piece of advice? And if it's um, go to the Tech Nation website, uh, <laughs> that's OK. If it's something... programs over brackets. <laughs> no, I think, you know, it is about for me i think it is about community it's about learning from others it's about those people that have been there exactly as barbara said taking the time to give back but obviously we are in an online world at the moment so just making sure you are still engaging and not just getting too head down in your business just to sometimes look out and also learn from others barbara yeah i think it's spot opportunity and you know, be willing to think against the grain and find that opportunity, be ready to work hard and ask questions of the people who are in front of you. Thank you, and Fiona. Yeah, so um, 
I really love living and working in this region. We've got a fantastic ecosystem, really, really supportive networks. So look out uh, for Sync Norwich, Norfolk Developers Hot Source, the uh, Norwich Cambridge Tech Corridor, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever your field is, there is probably a network out there that can support you and connect you with the right people. And they put on fantastic seminars and presentations and events uh, now online, of course, but um, do get engaged and, and yeah. Thank take advantage of, the, of this fantastic region. Thank you. Well, thank you all. Um, thank you to Taya Goodluck from Tech Nation, Fiona Lettis from UEA, Barbara Starrett from EPOS Now, Simon Thorpe from Cambridge Angels. You've been a fantastic panel. There's been some fantastic engagement with this. Um, and um, I hope you all have a good day and look forward to seeing you face to face pretty soon. Same here. All Next right. time. Thank have a great day. Thank you. Bye, Bye now. Bye. Bye.